So when I was a little girl, I um, really wanted an easy bake oven, <laughs> desperately. Um, I never got it, but it was always on my Christmas list. And I wanted this so that I could be a, like an independent baker. I wanted nothing more than to mix my little recipes and put it in and let a light bulb bake whatever it was baking. Um, it just looked so fun and so easy and promised a little glimmer of independence. So the recipes were so simple, even if the results were pretty uneven. I think Easy Bake Ovens have gotten better now, but when I was a kid, your treats weren't always the tastiest. Um, you couldn't be sure if you get a half-baked cake, but that really didn't matter. That wasn't the essence of the Easy Bake. All that mattered was the combined promise of treats, minimal effort, and at least in theory, no parental supervision. <laughs> so sure, the Easy Bake Oven didn't require any particular knowledge of baking. In fact, there weren't a lot of rules at all. You didn't know, have to know how to be a baker to use an Easy Bake Oven. And because you didn't have to submit yourself to any of the foundational rules of baking, and the science of baking, you also didn't really have a chance to be creative in any meaningful way, beyond the decorating, and the decorating was also probably as inedible as the <laughs> cake mixture that came out. So you didn't have to be a baker to bake. And let us be honest, anyone, any parents out there who've had to taste something from an Easy Bake Oven, has anyone had to do that ever? Okay, so a few of you. Um, you can probably confirm this, that they're, the treats are disgusting. Yeah, for the most part. Um, and, and I've heard from some people they border on inedible, but you eat them because you love your children. Um, and your half-baked cake is still half-baked no matter how much icing or sprinkles you put on top of it. And sometimes I wonder if in the church we haven't sort of easy-baked the Bible and our encounter with the Bible. I know that I have. Um, people, I think, can find themselves tempted in a world of speed and acceleration, everything's going so fast, to treat scripture and even the liturgy like, like the Easy Bake Oven. We can be tempted to mix together some scripture passages, some historical facts, a dash of feelings, and we get sort of like a half-baked answer to our lives, or to who Jesus is in our lives, or to what it means to encounter Jesus in our lives. And we are sometimes tempted, I know I am, to see the liturgy as sort of superfluous <coughs> to Christian life. That the real living goes on during the week. And the liturgy is maybe an add-on, or a duty, and maybe not a delightful duty, as Dorothy Day would say, the duty of delight. Um, and maybe a recent America article featured a millennial who said that they knew it was hard to go to Mass because there's Sunday brunch. So maybe like it's hard to view script, uh, liturgy as anything other than like one Sunday option among others. So in every age, I think the Christian life has appeared foolish, and I think particularly so in our own age. Our age offers us fast, cheap delights, <coughs> quick answers. And in contrast to the spirit of our age, in some ways, Christian life isn't a do-it-yourself project. It doesn't offer quick results or easy fixes, and it certainly doesn't secure prosperity, and it doesn't prevent disappointment or suffering. We cannot reduce scripture to a collection of concepts or principles. And we can't reduce the liturgy, and, and I'm sure you all know this, to a therapeutic exercise to make us better people. It, it does do that, but that's not its purpose. Its purpose is for us to adore God. 